Hi everybody, welcome to another VectorWorks video. My name is Jonathan Reeves and I'm introducing a section from a webinar we did a couple of weeks ago on the new features of Service Pack 3. So I'd like to introduce uh, my colleague Kissing Chance from VectorWorks. She's a VectorWorks specialist. She's going to take you through the introduction on these new features and then another colleague will run through the cable tools in the new improved Service Pack 3 for VectorWorks Spotlight. Hope you enjoy the video and thanks for watching. With the release of VectorX 2022, there was a lot of development that went into the next-gen technology. With the VectorX being the first BIM application to run natively on Apple Silicon, the use of Metal on Mac and DirectX on Windows. In Service Pack 3, there's also been another core change with the use of GLTF, GLB when exporting MVR to Vision. GLTF, which stands for GL Transmission File, is basically another 3D file format, which has replaced the 3DS format. The new file format uses the most up-to-date technology, making it easier for wider collaboration in the industry and project information exchange. The main change you'll see in Service Pack 3 is a new check button for export in 3DS. So if you go to the file menu, export, export MVR, in this dialog box you'll see the new 3DS file format so you can continue as previous version. Otherwise, you can just click OK and save your MVR file. You can then take this MVR file into Vision or any other suitable applications. With the release of 2022, there's been a few other additional updates to increase productivity, such as more context menus for selecting lighting devices by instrument type. We can make quick changes to any of the fields or select lighting devices by position, making it easier to just pick up information on that specific truss um, devices. There's also been additional ad updates to the find and modify menu, allowing you to set criteria of your most regular commands. You can also action those criteria and manage the sets. By choosing what you want to search for and adjust, Checking out the fields correct, so for example, moving light on the design layer in this one. We can then modify by deleting, changing classes, or any of the other actions listed. So I'm just going to create this set, so I'm going to name it moving light, new class, because this will now be one of my regular set that I'll be using moving forward. And I'm just going to click OK. Notice that I haven't clicked Applied. So when I go to Devices, they're on the class None. So now if I go back to find the Modify menu and I select it from my, my drop-down menu, Moving Class New, Moving Light New Class, and select the class I want to move the Moving Light to, I will then click Apply for it to take effect. I could then make an adjustment to any other field or commands or criteria that I need um, and click OK. Now going back to check on those moving lights, you can see that they're moved to the correct classes. Again, these little commands will just increase your productivity as you're working. I'll now show a short video um, on one of the biggest adjustments for the entertainment industry, which is the cable tool. Welcome to the cable tool suite skill videos. Cable planning is a vital part of any production no matter what size or type. Ever since the original cable tools were added to Spotlight, we've been gathering feedback from you about pain points and what you needed to be added to support your cable planning processes. The new cable tools suite has been developed as a result of this feedback. The new tools take advantage of all the latest Vectorworks technology like styles and data tags, have significantly improved performance and use an efficient 2D, 3D hybrid workflow. To achieve all of this, the entire tool set was re-engineered from scratch and a range of new features, tools, and concepts have been added to Spotlight. In this, the first of the Cable Tool skill videos, you'll go over the differences between the old and the new tools. You'll learn a bit about the supporting concepts and features behind the new tools. Each of the new tools and supporting features will be covered in much more detail later in the video series. The first thing you will notice when comparing the new Cable Tool suite with the old is that instead of individual specialized insertion tools for the different cable types, there is now a single cable tool that can insert any type of cable. The new cable tool has been designed to streamline the process of drawing cables. You no longer have to configure the tool preferences to set up each type of cable you want to draw. Now, simply select the cable style and start drawing. 
For example, you would have a style for SOCAPEX cables and another for XLR microphone cables. Other changes include the addition of auto numbering and the consolidation of several of the old cable planning menu commands into the tool as modes, all of which will help speed up your cable drawing workflow. In addition to the re-engineered cable tool itself, there are three completely new tools in the cable planning suite. The first is the cable path tool. It is common when planning event cable systems that many of your cable runs will share the same route for at least part of their length. For example, from the Dimmer City to the cable truss. This tool creates cable path objects that are used as insertion guides to speed up the drawing process and reduce the need to duplicate cable objects. The second is the distributor tool, which is used to place your power and signal distributor objects like multi-core breakouts, audio amplifiers, and DMX splitters. The third is the cable area tool, which is used to assign cable tool insertion preferences to specific areas of your design. For example, you may want to use a different amount of spare cable when planning lighting power cables than from when you're planning audio speaker cables. To get the most out of the cable tool suite, there are a number of concepts and terms that need to be understood. Along with a couple of features like styles and data tags that you may not be familiar with yet. The first of the new concepts that the tool introduces is that of the distributor and consumer objects. For our purposes, a distributor object is anything that can split a power or data signal. Good examples include moving light distros, DMX splitters, and multi-core breakouts. Previously, break-ins and breakouts were part of multi-core cables. Now they are a separate object with their own symbols and attached data. A consumer is any object that requires power and or signal to function, such as a moving light, a rigging hoist, or an audio speaker. The new cable tool suite is designed to be used in both 2D and 3D drafting workflows. Cable runs drawn in 2D will automatically document height changes when they're connected to trusses and pipes with a trim height, automatically creating a 3D cable object. And combined with the easy to use 2 and 3D editing options removes the need to manually enter height changes in the cable object properties to compensate for the 3D route a cable run has to follow. This provides a fast and easy to use drafting workflow no matter whether you prefer to draw in 2D or 3D. One of the key focuses of the new cable tool suite is to make the cable planning workflow as efficient as possible by reducing the number of mouse clicks required to insert a cable, making them easier to edit, and improving the performance of the cable objects themselves. The new tools are designed to aid your workflow and make it useful for planning any type of event, show, or production cabling system of any size. The cable preferences are settings that control how the cable tool calculates the length of a cable run and what cable parts are used to create it. To better support the new cable tool suite, these preferences have been reworked, and you are no longer limited to a single set of cable preferences in a file. In Spotlight terminology, connectors are the plugs and sockets used on cables and other objects that interact with them. To support the wide and constantly changing variety of connector types that are used in the entertainment industry, the list of available connectors for the cable tool suite is easily edited and customized. Cable parts are the individual cables used to create a cable run, and each represents a physical cable of a standard length. For example, a 10 meter socapex or a five foot microphone cable. Each part documents a variety of important data about the cable, and you can easily edit or create new parts to better represent what is available to you locally. Object styles are a type of resource that defines some or all of the parts of an object. The cable tool uses styles to define the type of cable object being created, including its classing, graphical elements, cable connectors, and other parameters that previously had to be set manually in the tool preferences. Data tags are an annotation and labeling system that can be set to display specific data from a linked object based on the data that object has attached to it. The cable tools use data tags to display important information about the cables, distributors, and cable paths. Another of the key objectives of the new cable tool suite was to make them fully Braceworks compatible. Cable objects now apply accurate loads to the trusses and pipes that they are associated with. If you have any additional questions to the cable tool, I would suggest having a look at the Vectorworks University. Um, as the training team has created a very in-depth cable tool suite training guide.